we are recovering. <laughs> Quit shaking. <laughs> You're moving the world. You know, I like to think about weird things. You know, unusual things, things that most people don't think about, talk about, consider. In the morning, I like to think that, imagine this, if you will. All the angels are getting together for their morning briefing. Well, I got George, you know, George, oh man, I'll bet you George, he's going to wake up the same way he did yesterday. You know, just kind of like cranky and sore and mean and mad, you know, and just... <laughs> Nah, I'll take five of that, you know, and I'll bet you that, you know, George is going to wake up happy today because I've been really, really, really trying to keep all these things away from him. You know, I've been kind of planning out the sunshine, you know, and the beautiful day I've got in store for him. So I'll bet you today that George is, is going to put a smile on his face. And sure enough, you know, the angels kind of get together and talk about these things, you know, because they look down from heaven to see what, what it is that God's doing in the lives of people like you and me now maybe they don't bet <laughs> maybe they do you know we do have an accuser in heaven an accuser of the brethren who says God that George now he's gonna he's gonna whine he's gonna complain you know what you did to the children of Israel when they whined and they complained you said that they weren't, you know, going to, you know, you were going to judge them. God, I want you to judge George today. I don't think he's one of your children. I think he's one of mine. And you know, I think about these things because when I see a day like today, whether for good or for bad, whether for evil or for righteousness, then I think about God in control. How does God put up with all of this? I mean, really, how's he put up with you and I? How's he deal with the angels, you know, on the one hand, kind of like doing their own little thing, watching, going, ooh, ah, ee, ooh, ick, eh, eh, er. <laughs> You know, and you and I, you know, kind of waking up in the morning going, eh, I don't know if I'm a Christian or not, you know. I don't feel like it because, you know, today things aren't going the way I want them to. How does God deal with all that when he made the day to rejoice and be glad in? How do you think our Father deals with it? I don't know. I'm not God. I don't think about those things. I do. Because you see, God loves me. And because he loves me, I kind of like to do those things that are <coughs> pleasing in his sight. I kind of like to find out what it is that's wrong and right. I kind of like to take the day and make it the way God intended it to be. To rejoice and be glad in. Now, I don't necessarily have all the reasons in the world to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, my wife's sicker today and staying home and, you know, I need to take care of her in some way. God help her and no, that's it. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Uh, right. But the reality of seeking to find out what it is that God would have for us today is kind of what God enjoys about us spending time with Him in the morning. O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto Thee and will look up. You see, there's something about spending time with someone that causes you to be like that someone. Now, maybe you're spending too much time with yourself in the morning. Maybe you're such a miserable character that you spend all this time in the bathroom on yourself, with yourself, that you're full of self. <laughs> Ooh, wow, there's an idea. Hmm, maybe yourself isn't the best self that yourself could be. Maybe you need to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus. Or spend some time before you're all about yourself with someone other than yourself. God. So you see, when you spend time with God, your morning goes different because you're in His presence. You're talking to Him. And I don't know 
about your definition of God, but I know that God is love. So when I want to be loved, hey, I get up in the morning and frankly, spend some time with God, my Father. Do whatever God says so that the righteous and just requirement of the law might be fully met in us who live and move not in the ways of the flesh but in the ways of the spirit our lives governed not by the standards and according to the dictates of the flesh but controlled by the Holy Spirit Romans 8 4 in him we live and in him we move in him we have our being Acts 17 28 God is everything literally talk to him all day long every time you need to make a decision or overcome anything or need wisdom about anything especially when something negative or something anti like you know God is coming your way whenever you think you ought to go one way ask God which way it's a better way whatever he says to do do it if he says don't do it well don't do it you don't belong to yourself you belong to God you've been bought with a precious price the blood of the lamb religious teaching tries to predetermine what God wants from us and then for us to make our decision of whether to do it or not but he will write on your heart what is good and what is bad for you. He will tell you what to do. He will speak to your inner conscience and keep you safe as long as you pay attention to his voice and do what he tells you to do. Throughout the day today, occasionally stop, take a moment, find out what you are doing and ask him if there's anything he wanted or he wants to say to you stop for a moment not to pray only hmm but to listen